Hello, in this video we'll continue with our corporate distribution discussion. We'll focus on another problem. If you have yet to look at the corporate distribution checklist or the previous problems, please make sure you do that because it's very important to understand the different steps and how the tax law for corporate distributions works out. So this is problem number seven. Peachtree Corporation has accumulated earnings and profits of $140,000 and no current EMP for the current year, EMP being earnings and profits. On December 31st, Peachtree distributes to Grape, its sole shareholder, a parcel of land with a basis of $130,000 and a fair market value of $100,000. Grape's basis in the stock, the Peachtree Corporation stock, is $50,000. So remember from the checklist video, corporate distribution checklist, whenever there is a corporate distribution, we always have to consider four steps. The first step is to consider the consequences to the corporation distributing property or cash. Second is to consider the consequences with respect to adjusting from step one for any gains from step one, adjusting current earnings and profits. Step three is to look at the consequences of the shareholder. Here that shareholder is going to be grape. And when we do that, we look at a three-part three waterfall. We look at the amount of the distribution, and it's going to be characterized or classified as a dividend, which is our first stop on the waterfall, to the extent of earnings and profits. Next stop on the waterfall, if we have anything left, left over, is return of capital, which we focus on the basis. Here, Graves' basis is $50,000 in the stock. And then finally, the last stop on that waterfall, which is everything else, capital gain distribution. Once we go through step three, the last step, step four, is to adjust accumulated earnings and profits for next year so that we have at the beginning of next year so we can do this analysis over again. And the four steps keep rolling and rolling and rolling over and over. So let's go ahead and start with step one and look at the consequences with respect to the corporation here, Peachtree Corporation. So we're focusing on the corporate consequences, the corporation or corporate consequences with respect to the distributing corporation. So when you look at cash, if Peachtree Corporation was distributing cash, which we saw in previous problems, whenever there's a cash distribution, step one has no consequences. And the reason why is because the face value and the basis of the cash equals. However, if you're distributing property other than cash, here we have a parcel of land we have to do the amount realized, the AR, minus the adjusted basis under Section 311. So amount realized under Section 311, we basically, uh, the tax law says it's as if the corporation distributee, here, here Peachtree Corporation, was selling that property to someone for that amount, that fair market value. Well, the fair market value of the land here is $100,000. So the amount realized, which is going to be the fair market value of that piece of property, is going to be $100,000. We subtract away from that the basis, the basis of the land in the hands of the corporation is $130,000. We have a $30,000 loss. We have a $30,000 loss, realized loss. So section 311 says that you must recognize gain with, with respect to this step, but you can never recognize loss. Therefore, the tax law takes this loss, disallows it, and the corporation recognizes zero loss. Zero loss in the transaction under section 311 of the Internal Revenue Code. So that means because there's no consequences in step one, step two, where we adjust current EMP for step one. So we adjust e current EMP for number one has no consequences because there's zero in step one, right? You can't have any consequences. You can't adjust current EMP for anything else when step one results in zero. Okay. Step two is also no effect or no change. So step one, Corporation has no consequences, so no gain or loss has to be recognized. Step two, no adjustment to current earnings and profits. Okay, so now we go over 
to step three. So in step three, we're looking at the consequences to the shareholder. The shareholder here being grape, and that's the reason why I picked the purple color. So the shareholder uh, consequences. And remember, the first part of that is to determine the amount of the distribution. So a distribution to the shareholder equals actual cash received plus the fair market value of non-cash property received minus any liabilities on that property that the shareholder has to assume. Well, here there's no liabilities on the land. Um, Grape is not receiving any cash. Therefore, we use the fair market value of the land. So the distribution amount here is $100,000. Okay, we have our distribution amount. So now we go through the three-part waterfall. So the first stop of the waterfall is dividend. A distribution is a dividend to the extent of earnings and profits. So here, accumulated earnings and profits is $140,000 and current EMP adjusted after step two for zero is, also, is gonna be zero. So we have 140,000 accumulated EMP and zero current EMP. Now you might recall from previous videos where we had all these different crazy situations. What happens if accumulated EMP is positive, current EMP is negative, or vice versa? Or what if one's zero and we have something? How does all that work? Well, here, because current EMP is zero after step two and accumulated EMP is $140,000, that means our EMP is $140,000 and we only have one distribution. So the distribution amount is 100,000. Distribution is a dividend to the extent of earnings and profits, which is 140,000. Therefore, all of the dividend is a, I'm sorry, all of the distribution, right? You gotta be careful with the wording. All of the distribution is considered a dividend. All of the distribution is considered a dividend. So that means that when it comes to return of capital, which I always call ROC, remember that's no tax consequences and it reduces the basis. We have no return of capital, which means that our $50,000 basis in the stock, Grapes, $50,000 basis in Peachtree Corporation stock remains $50,000 after this, um, after the consequences in this distribution. And finally, the last stop on our three-part waterfall is capital gain distribution, capital gain distribution. And the result there is also zero because again, we've used everything up in that first part, in that first part. Finally, the last thing to consider when it comes to the shareholder is what is the adjusted basis of the land that the shareholder takes? Well, under section 301D, the basis equals the fair market value, not the basis of the property, the fair market value. So therefore, the basis of the land is going to be the $100,000 fair market value at the date of distribution. Okay, we've just completed step three. So now we have to do step four. In step four, we're determining the accumulated, I'm sorry, no, that's correct. Accumulated, again, making sure I'm specific on the language. Accumulated EMP to roll over to next year. Okay. Accumulated EMP for next year. So the formula is we start with the accumulated EMP given to us in the problem and the current EMP given to us in the problem. We then adjust for step two. We also are going to subtract away what we call the distribution adjustment. And that gives us, let's make that more linear there. And that will give us the accumulated EMP for next year. So accumulated EMP at the beginning of the year, or I'm sorry, during this problem given to us is $140,000. In the problems, $140,000 for the current year. Current EMP is zero. Step two was also, is also zero because there was no effect. Distribution adjustment. Okay, so this one we got to pay close attention to. Usually the distribution adjustment is the amount of the distribution that's treated as a dividend. So you're tempted to go, okay, we subtract away $100,000, we have $40,000 accumulating P for next year. This is a special exception. And I mentioned this in previous videos as well as a checklist. When the basis, so there's a special rule. If the basis of the property distributed 
is greater than the fair market value, right? So our basis is $130,000. That is greater than the fair market value of $100,000. When the basis of the property distributed is greater than fair market value, instead of using the dividend amount, we're going to use the basis amount, assuming that it was all treated as a dividend, which it was. So because all the fair market value is a dividend, we're going to use all, we're going to use the $130,000 basis instead. So we actually subtract away the $130,000 adjusted basis. This is a special rule. I'm going to put a little asterisk here, a little star, um, because it's a special rule. Again, this only happens if you have a cash distribution, we still apply, always apply our general rule because the, the face value of the cash and the basis of the cash are always the same. But when you have a property distribution, if the basis is greater, to the, greater than the fair market value and you got the full dividend from the distribution, then you use the basis amount instead. So that means our accumulating EMP for next year is going to be $10,000, $10,000. So that's step four. Okay, so let's summarize everything. Step one, we have no gain or loss to the corporation because yes, we had a loss, but section 311 says no loss can be taken by the corporation distributee. Step two, no adjustment because step one was zero. Step three, we have a $100,000 dividend to the shareholder, no return of capital or capital gain, and the adjusted basis in the land is $100,000 fair market value. Finally, step four with $10,000 accumulate EMP for next year. Okay, before we finish this problem, I want to do something. Let's say that Grape, now Grape has this land, right? And the basis of the land is $100,000. Let's say, so we're going to add facts. We're going to add on some facts so you understand. You're going to see something interesting here. And the reason why is because, yes, it relates to our original problem. Let's say that a year later, Grape sells the land for $180,000 cash. For $180,000 cash. So if Grape sells the land for $180,000 cash, we apply our normal tax rules, right? Amount realized minus adjusted basis gives us the realized gain or loss. And then, of course, the realized gain or loss will be recognized because we're actually getting cash. So there's no non recognition rule that will apply. So the amount realized is going to be the $180,000 cash received minus the adjusted basis which we've just determined is 100,000, right? That gives us an $80,000, or grape, I should say. That gives, um, that gives grape an $80,000 gain that must be recognized. So notice something. We took a $100,000 basis on distribution, and then when we sell it, we use that $100,000 basis. What happens to that $130,000 basis? What happened to that? Did it just disappear? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. The corporation never got the $30,000 loss benefit, right? That difference between the $100,000 basis or value of the land and the $130,000 basis. So the corporation never got the benefit of that loss. And then guess what? The shareholder, when the shareholder disposes, does not get the basis, does not get that benefit of that original basis, $130,000 that $30,000 difference as well. Because if we did do the $130,000 basis, let's say we carried that over. Let's say the basis was $130,000. It'd be $180,000 amount realized minus $130,000 adjusted basis, $50,000 gain. So we'd actually get the benefit of the loss. But guess what? Under section 311, the corporation on distribution did not get the $30,000 loss, right? It was changed to, to zero. And then on sale later, because the shareholder takes a fair market value basis in the land, guess what? The $30,000 difference between the $100,000 fair market value and the $130,000 basis, guess what? It disappears. This is an anti-abuse rule. And this is, a, this is the reason why a lot of times in tax, it's hard to understand the rationale of things. Here, Congress was putting anti-abuse rule in play because there was abuse by taxpayers. So in order to stop the anti-abuse, they said, you know what, corporation, you don't get the benefit of the loss, and we're going to stick with our fair market value basis. Yes, we understand that the shareholder loses out on that basis, um, the, that difference, that, that $30,000 here. But to make sure the system, we don't allow for abuse in certain situations, we're going to keep with that rule. So that's what happens. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please make sure you watch future videos on corporate distributions or other topics and 
Um, I hope that you've now seen how all of these steps kind of fit together.